All right, folks, welcome back to another budget gem or budget bust. Today I have for you the Soundstream TN4 900D. Now, some of you are probably saying right now to yourselves, I've already seen that dyno, Ryan. Sonic Electronics did this years ago. Everyone knows this is a budget gem of a four channel. Well, that's not really the point of this video. Well, actually, you know what? It kind of is. Um, this amp is not the same as the one in the Sonic Electronics video. We're, we're going to kind of go into this a little bit more. Um, the board that's in the, the circuit board that is in the video of the TN4900D in the Sonic Electronics dyno video is commonly known as the Phillips board. Uh, I don't know why it's called that. I, that. I might even be screwing that up. But it's a very, very common circuit board that's in, in a lot of different four channels. A lot of good four channels, um, especially budget four channels. It's, a, it's an extremely good board. Um, you'll find it um, in the Polk uh, PAD 4000.4D. I actually used to own that, one of those amps. I get a test, great amp. Um, that's a marine slash car version. Um, it's in the NVX JAD 800.4. It's in the Precision Power Phantom 900.4, a sister company of Epsilon here with Soundstream. Um, it was in Hertz. It was in, uh, I heard there were ones that were in Focals. It originated with Nakamichi though. Nakamichi was the first to come out with that amplifier and that amp series. Um, that series of amps, there was a 1000 watt version. There was this version here, the four channel. Well, not this one. Um, there was a five channel version and a two channel. All of them solid, solid amps. Why would you mess with that? Well, we're gonna find out here, probably greed. Cause Soundstream has done just that. And what's worse about it is they haven't told anyone. Um, if you look online and you know, I'm gonna show you a picture right here. This is of last night on Soundstream's website. Showing the same board, the same amp that it's always been. But let's look at this amplifier here. Uh, I'm not gonna do a full unboxing video because you know, this amp was sent in to me by a, a viewer, Kevin Tillak, out of Georgia. Um, he contacted me, kind of upset because he had he wanted two of these amps. He has one of the old version, and he got this one in. And he was like, hey, this is not the same amp. And, uh, you know, it's not. You can see along this side here, there's no fuses. And over here, the RCAs are in the wrong place. Um, let's look at some pictures that Kevin sent in to me because these really, really show the difference between these two amplifiers. Uh, first, you've got here, you've got the RCAs and that side panel. You can tell right off the bat the RCAs are in a different spot. The other thing is the settings. Uh, there's a lot more settings on the original version versus this one. Um, the original one, you could do two channel uh, that would output to all four outputs. This one, you do not. You have to run four channels of RCAs to this one. Uh, next picture here, you can see this is the uh, the power terminal side. The original version even would come with an adapter for a higher gauge wiring. Uh, you don't get that on the new one. Um, also fusing. The old one had 75 amps of fusing. Really random number, but that's what it came with. The new one, no fusing at all. Um, also, let, let's look at the size comparison. You can kind of see it. The, the new one is a little bit bigger than the old one. So they've done the best that they can to make this amplifier look like the old amplifier. Even, even down to the case. It's got the same ratings. But I don't know if it performs the same way. So let's crack her open and let's take a look at the guts. 
All right, let's look at some guts here. And uh, yeah, completely different circuit board than the old one. A uh, whole lot less going on here than in the old amp. Uh, looks kind of eh,ly built. Uh, big difference is the amount of MOSFETs. Look, you can see here, but there's only. Let's see if I can zoom in for you guys so you can really take a look. Yeah, there you go. So there's really only uh, seven total MOSFETs for both the power and output section of this amp. And uh, last time I looked, this amp was not designed in Brazil. So you would want to see more MOSFETs for sure in here. Um, and you do not get that. It's kind of sloppy in there, to be honest with you. So not a lot of hope on this one. Okay. Nothing left to do now but to strap up the Soundstream TN4900D up to our amp dyno and find out if this amp puts out the same power as the old model. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of hope. I look, you know, we just looked at the guts. It does not look as good inside as the old one. So, got a feeling we got another bust on our hands, folks. But this is why we do the amp dyno, just to find out what it really does. I'll see you after the test. Alright folks, uh, final thoughts here on the new version of the Soundstream TN4.900D. Yeah, uh, this amp sucks. Uh, I don't know how any other way to say it. Yeah, definitely a bust. Uh, you know, it wasn't like the power output was horrendous at this at this uh, dollar amount this was you find these for about 149 bucks but if you notice in the test like some of the the channels the the front and rear channels are very imbalanced um, I, I can't explain it. it you know some some of these tests you saw all of a sudden like one of the channels really explode up um, where it was putting 320 watts out and the, and all of a sudden the other side was putting out 190. And usually that's like, okay, well the gain is set wrong or something like that. Well, I recalibrated this amp three different times and the gain was fine. Uh, I, even ch I even switched around the inputs um, off camera just to see, okay, what does this do? I was still getting the same funky ratings. Um, it's it's just it's a badly designed amplifier so yeah i'm sorry if you bought one if you can return it um definitely definitely do not buy one of these 
it's not a good amp. Um, I haven't hooked it up to the speakers yet, but I'm assuming it doesn't sound all that great. I've, I've heard, I've read some reviews, people saying, hey, this does not sound like the old one. I, I imagine that they're probably correct. But, yeah. Shame on you, Soundstream. You're scamming people right now. This is in 1985. I'm around with dinos. Big D's got a dino. You, you do this, we're going to catch you and bust you, buddy. So, uh, time for the Soundstream amp. This one in particular. Boo. Time for the sales to go down, my friend. Don't buy this, please. That's it for me for now. Uh, thanks, Kevin Tillack, for sending this in. Thank you very much for the pictures you took. They really highlighted everything that's going on with this amp. And uh, I'll send it back to you soon. Um, Till next time, folks, I got more amps to test. Hopefully one's a lot better than this one.